so I'm, I'm Christopher Morris. I'm a professor here at, at George Washington University Milken Institute School of Public Health. Uh, I'm a virologist, epidemiologist, and um, I, I, I do a lot of outbreak work. Um, and I'm, I'm currently working with, uh, with folks at INRB um, on um, strengthening their diagnostic uh, capacities and abilities to, to understand what's going on um, under the hood of viral hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic fever outbreaks and other outbreaks uh, that affect their populations. So I'm, I'm really, really happy to be a part of this panel. Thank you for the, for the invite. And uh, couldn't be uh, prouder to be here uh, representing um, in honor of uh, uh, Prof. Moyembe. Um, so talking about those, those tools, those, you know, the tools that we need, the tools we have to develop and, and how, you know, global health security and, you know, responds to or prepares for or gets ahead of uh, emerging infectious diseases, you know, it, it does depend on, on, I hope, the sorts of things I try and do in terms of uh, creating cooperation, the kind of durable cooperation like, like Nancy has uh, with INRB is, is, you know, is really, a, a, you know, the, the standard bearer. Um, this is not something that you can just show up in, in the middle of an outbreak and, you know, have your best effect. I mean, you might, yes, you can have a great effect, but it takes a longer term uh, understanding of what's, what the needs are, what the, what the capacities are, um, how to build strength in those situations. Um, and so some of the challenges that we face, you know, as an international community is, is what are the tools we need to develop to get us there, to help us be better partners, um, to have help help have better outcomes, better effect, and and in terms of like uh, you know solutions, pipelines, and such, there's there's all kinds of different you know manner in which we might find um, you know new tools at our disposal, right? Um, there's the there's the the pull, the gravity well that of funding from places like like BARDA and such to say, like, we need these tools. We know these threats are out there. Uh, we are going to now solicit for responders that can try and help us build those tools. Um, there's the, the unsolicited push of, you know, good idea fairies from individual researchers and such in academia and elsewhere who, who have some new technology. I want to push it towards a, towards a solution. And, and, you know, brokering that, you know, that combination in the presence of, of you know, Populations and countries, and you know, and collaborators that can help take advantage of it is is really, I think, a, a tricky thing, right? So a lot of times these these developments are happening outside of conversations with potential collaborators, outside of conversations for sure, for certain, with populations that might ultimately need those things or take or or make good, you know, make good use of them, and and so you know, getting that that collaboration to be a little more. Um, you know, explicitly in involving those those populations and those, those potential collaborators, I think is really is really critical. And it's difficult. It's outside of normal, you know, um, proposal and, and product development cycles. And I think that that's something that um, would would definitely be worth us putting up front. So when we talk about developing new tools, you know, I think there should be not just a hand wavy preamble to it about like this the good it might do. But I think it has to be baked in a little bit more to the whole process of, of R&D, frankly. Um, and I think there has to be, you know, the ability and, you know, an honest ability to show, you know, collaborator and community buy-in for these things in a way that it's going to actually go to market and not in a way we usually say go to market, right? So not, not just get it, you know, through the, you know, the abyss of, of the regulatory hurdles that we need to still figure out much better how to get through. but after approval, how are we going to get it out to market? How are we can get that that community to already be like, you know, willingly, you know, looking forward to and accepting of it? So, um, so I think that that's that's a, a very human process that uh, needs to be, I think, baked in a lot more to our R and D uh, development cycles. So, 